But for more on this, I'd like to bring in John Burns, Education Director for Concerned Veterans for America, Marine Corps, and Army National Guard veteran. All right, so walk us through this, John. There is seven, I saw that number, 7% of the military, but only 3% sees combat. Explain this a little bit to me. Well, you know, Carl, there are things besides combat that can cause stress or traumatic stress sure. can be witnessed. So you can see accidents. Obviously, you know, like fellow veteran, you're aware that we have a military sexual trauma problem. So so there are women and men who are suffering it from that. Uh, and and probably some people bring their their pre-life trauma into their military service. And then veterans also tend to go ahead and get jobs like police officers. And, and I don't know a police officer on the planet who doesn't have PTSD. Yeah. So, so, you know, you can get PTSD after you get out of the military and you go, you say, you know, I've been a cop for four years, but I served in Afghanistan. The VA mm -hmm. is just going to assume you got in, in, in Afghanistan. Other than that, you know, I'm not sure why you, you got to trust. You always got to be a little hesitant about trusting the VA's numbers anyway. Oh, so. sure. Well, you know, John, it's interesting because, like, look, I did two combat tours in Iraq as a SEAL. Like, I, I saw a lot of business and I thought I was fine. And I went to go get reevaluated like every eight to 10 years that the VA does, which you know very well about. And they said, have you ever been screened for PTSD? Have you ever had any of these symptoms? And I'm checking off like half the symptoms. And they're like, yeah, go get it checked out. Turns out I got it. So, I don't, you know, what do you do once people have this? What varying degrees, what options are out there for guys to get treated or girl, girls? Well, you know, the VA, as you, you if you're a Netflix fan, you might have noticed is spending millions of dollars to get mm -hmm. veterans to call their hotline if they think they might be in crisis. Right. Uh, the problem is, is, is that the VA is under equipped to actually solve the problem with the veterans. They just don't have the manpower to handle the mental health issue on site or, or in their clinics. So as you may be aware, Concerned Veterans for America a few years back worked to help pass the Mission Act, which mandated that the VA would refer patients outside if they couldn't be seen for mental health care or other issues within a set amount of time, or if veterans had to drive more than a set number of minutes to mm -hmm. get to that. And what we found is that, is that the VA has not been following that law. And you know, I think that's part of the reason that, you know, again, a statistic you're probably familiar with, we lost somewhere around seven, seven and a half thousand men and women in the global war on terror overseas. Yeah. We've lost 30,000 military members and veterans to suicide since September 11, 2001. Yeah. And it's something that's just not going addressed. Actually, we were talking about this, like 22 folks. I think it's down to about 18 a day now. 17, uh, but, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is that's a staggering number. The fact that this is not headlining every yet we're you know, we're so concerned about what gender your two year old is. And yet we have 18 people who volunteered to die for their country, killing themselves and they can't get their act together at the V.A.? Well, the VA has never been able to get their act together to do anything except to ask for, for more money and to grow the size of their budget and their, their workforce, right? So again, 20, 2018, five years ago, June 6th, D-Day, we helped get the president to sign the VA Mission Act, which required this community care option be available to all veterans. Under the Trump administration, it was going pretty well until COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID started. Bureaucrats yeah. started to push back and restrict access. Fast forward to this administration, and there was a VAMissionAct.com website that veterans could go into, look at, see what their rights were, see what the procedures were to ask for mm -hmm. community care if they weren't getting assigned to it. And the current administration replaced that website with a redirect of a URL <sighs> to a site called Choose VA, right. asking the patient to come back to the VA hospital or VA clinic. It's unbelievable. So, so CVA, Concerned Veterans of America, has a sister organization, a 501c3 charitable organization, CVA Foundation. And what, what they did was reconstruct that website so now that v veterans and their family members who are looking to help them mm -hmm. can go to vamissionact.com and see all the information that the VA doesn't want you yep. to know about how to access community care. I hear from mental health yeah. providers, profit and nonprofit, they're waiting for these referrals. Right, yeah. Jo uh, John, what was the website one more time? So VA Mission Act, all one word, Perfect. VA Mission Act dot com. All right, John, appreciate you being here very much. Keep up the good work, sir. Thanks. Good all talk. right.